Hello and welcome to the NHS Our Community monthly webinar, which we usually have on the third Wednesday of every month, where today I am very excited to be introducing Matt Dre from the Cabinet Office, who is going to talk about creating reproducible and accessible spreadsheets using an R package that he built called, and I'm sure I might have got this wrong, Ally Table, but it's A11Y. Um, please do correct me if I got that wrong, Matt. Matt has written some great blogs, which I have used um, without knowing where Matt was working at the time or what he was doing in R and for the civil service. Um, so very, very helpful in the blogs, writing things out and packages that have totally helped me with reproducible an analytical pipelines, which I'm sure you'll hear more about as we go along. Any questions from people today, please could you put them in the Q&A and we'll pick those up at the very end and I will pass you over to Matt. Wonderful, thank you, Zoe. I didn't pay Zoe for that. Uh, <laughs> surprise. Um, I'm about to share my screen and I'll just again ask that you can see it. So hopefully that's now full screen. Is that correct? Uh, it's not done. Yep, yeah, it's doing it. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. All righty then. So yes, first place to start probably is the naming of this thing, which is kind of a sore point. Um, it's it can be pronounced a few ways, I suppose. Accessibility tables is what I'm going to try and say, even though it's a very long word. Uh, and this is a talk about a, a package, an R package. Um, you'll notice that I've hastily scrolled out um, Earl Conf, September 2022. Uh, that's where I originally uh, gave this talk. Earl is, um, I think it stands for Enterprise Applications of the R Language, which is a bit of a mouthful. So Earl is a bit friendlier. Um, and that's a kind of general um, annual convention for our users and that covers uh, yeah people in government for sure but also um, people who work in, in industry insurance uh, medicine all those sorts of things and they usually get some interesting speakers in Hannah Fry was there um, most recently they've had John Byrne Murdoch as well you might know from the Financial Times so as mentioned yep yeah, Matt Dre so um, I've put civil service is where I work here um, because yes, I'll be moving on from the cabinet office very soon, um, but all the work that you see here around accessibility tables has been developed um, while I've been um, in the cabinet office in particular. So I always like to start with a slide which is TLDR, which is too long, didn't read. Um, in this case, I guess, didn't watch or didn't listen. So if you happen to get sleepy at any point um, or you think, oh, I can't be bothered to listen to this guy, actually, you can take this slide away with you. Uh, the talk is about generating best practice spreadsheets with help from this package, Accessibility Tables. Um, and there's two links there, which are probably the most important in the talk. The first one is a link to the documentation for the package. Uh, so that's a website built with the package down package, if you're familiar with that. Uh, and then also underneath is the, uh, the link to the source code on GitHub, GitHub for, um, for the package as well. Uh, that QR code doesn't rickroll you, I don't think, but I can't confirm that. I think it goes to the accessibility tables um, website. So I'll leave it there just for a second. Um, and then I'll talk about me. Uh, <laughs> And so you can see there, there's a, a perfect photograph of my own face. I think that lines up quite well. Um, and uh, what do I do? Well, in the civil service um, now for who knows, nine years, something like that, um, I've worked on uh, using R for reproducibility. And that includes things like producing publications, it includes things like um, creating maps uh, and so on. Uh, and so, as I say, like the rest of this talk is about something I've developed in that kind of uh, official capacity. Um, but also, as Zoe trailed, um, I also do a bit of what I'm calling off piece to R uh, on a personal blog, which is called rostrum.blog. Um, and on that blog, um, there's, a, there's a mix of things, shall we say. There's some helpful things, which include uh, various other packages that might help you do things to make your uh, R code more reproducible or R Studio add-ins to do these sorts of things. I've just created one that um, helps you um, add um, sort of snippets of code into your Quarto documents. If you're familiar with Quarto, it's sort of the super superseding um, tool for our markdown to some degree. Um, otherwise, there's some pretty nutty stuff on there as well. Um, I built packages to create little little games and our little roguelike games um, and also managed to create a kind of persistent cyber pet um, in a package that you can put on your machine. And then also things like Twitter bots um, for various reasons, um, which uh, are built using R and GitHub Actions. Um, you can find me on um, Twitter, yes, but also, of course, uh, Mastodon. Uh, that's a link there. 
and then for various other things, links to packages and so on, um, matt-dre.com. But that's enough about me for sure. What I'm here to talk about is um, what I'm framing as an opportunity. Um, and I don't mean that to come across in kind of like a, a multi-level marketing way. I'm not getting you to sign up for anything <clears throat> yet. Uh, <laughs> But uh, the opportunity here is something that's quite pressing and probably affects like most people who are listening in uh, or watching in. Um, and that problem, if you like, if that's what I call it, is uh, is is spreadsheets. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that there's most people on this call probably have winced when they've opened some kind of uh, official published spreadsheet, perhaps on gov.uk, um, maybe um, and probably most likely internal uh, shared spreadsheets uh, as well. And uh, what I want to show is that we can take that type of spreadsheet uh, and use guidance and uh, various tools to improve them for both users and the producers themselves. Um, so, yeah, as I say, the intent here is to kind of demonstra demonstrate an opportunity. I'm going to show you a, a spreadsheet in just a second. I'm giving you a warning, basically, as well. So I'm going to show you a spreadsheet, um, but I'm not calling out the people who have created that um, spreadsheet. I am just showing you that there's an opportunity for improvement. So um, I'm sure most people um, are familiar with this uh, national statistics publication. This is the latest UK egg statistics, pretty um, classic government spreadsheet is probably the right phrase. Um, some may say it's mundane. I would disagree. Um, as I said, this is this is something which uh, is a national statistic. It's a special badging. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but this is a classic gov.uk page with statistics on. Uh, and as you look down the page, there's um, a few things on there. There's an HTML file there. But further down, we've got a couple of um, XLSX spreadsheets. Um, and what we want to do effectively is try and help uh, improve this thing. Let's have a look at it inside uh, and uh, kind of consider what options we might have for improvement. Um, I've borrowed Clippy, I suppose is the, the right way of putting it. Um, celebrity Digital Assistant Clippy, I think is the, the, the name he likes. Um, apologies to Microsoft, of course, for doing that. Um, and for anyone who might be um, slightly triggered by the appearance of, uh, <laughs> of Clippy on the screen. Um, so if we crack open this, uh, this spreadsheet, um, it's quite zoomed out because I want you to kind of get a sense of the uh, of what's going on. Um, in here, we have a number of things which might be a little um, tricky for users, let's say. So this is uh, this is UK egg packing station throughput and prices data set spreadsheet, which is quite a mouthful. This is the first tab. It's called packers. Um, and so let's start by being kind of nitpicky here. Like what? How would this fare for kind of machine readability? Well, probably not brilliantly. If I kind of zoom in a little bit, you can see we've kind of got these empty rows, empty columns, those kinds of things. Um, grid lines are sometimes missing. I think you can see here there's kind of a white patch, but then we also have the grid lines elsewhere. We have triplicate headers looking at the data itself. So here we have throughput million dozens by country, then a gap then east and west. So there's quite a few levels of, of header there. Most of the values are kind of centered in the cells. This isn't always true. Um, and then the number of decimals also varies. And this isn't obvious just from looking at it, but when you click on a cell and look in the formula bar, you'll see that sometimes there's no uh, rounding that's actually taking place. It's just Excel handling that itself, but that's not consistent. Um, if I go on to the next, uh, tab in the spreadsheet. This is called Packers Annual. Uh, we can see a kind of consistent theme uh, compared to the, the last one, the last tab. Um, but there's some other things to look out for on here. I, I'm not completely sure what these kind of rogue numbers uh, are doing down here. I'm not sure whether that's uh, an error. Um, and then Clippy is very handily pointing out that we have the footnotes at the bottom of the page here. So if you were trying to kind of tab through this worksheet, or it's got a you know a long table on, like in our previous tab, you might miss the fact that there are some footnotes here. Uh, and unfortunately, it looks like there's a bit of a, a, a typo here. This is this is apparently from the year 20,212. So it's glad that Excel, you know, it's a good thing that Excel still exists uh, way into the future. Um, and you could argue that um, use of C for confidential is, is, is a good kind of symbol, but it doesn't quite follow the best practice um, that we'll look into in just a second. Finally, there's an information page at the very back. You could argue maybe this should be at the front. Um, we've got some slightly odd things again in here. 
gov.uk hyperlink kind of floating out here. Um, and then we also have the um, the information itself is it actually inside kind of text boxes. Uh, I don't know how this fares actually for trying to tab through this kind of information, um, but uh, it does mean that it's, um, it's sort of a separate entity from the cells themselves, which may be a problem. Uh, and Clippy here is just pointing at uh, this, this nice line here about these statistics being heavily referenced in industry publications such as Poultry World. So do check that out if that's something you're interested in. Um, so the point I'm trying to make here is like, you know, here's a spreadsheet. It's pretty typical. It's basically the first one I came across when I looked on the statistics page of gov.uk. And there's a few, you know, a few kind of interesting um, challenges uh, in there. This isn't necessarily typical of every single spreadsheet that exists. Many are, are very high quality and very, very good. Um, but this is one that uh, I think has some some areas for improvement. Um, I should say I have contacted the people who made this um, just to let them know that uh, I was going to be exploring this. Um, so this isn't kind of behind their back. Um, OK, so what, what do we need to improve then? Just to summarise, I think there's two things and I kind of mentioned it already. The first one is that the user experience probably needs to be improved here from the kind of um, front end, the people who download the spreadsheet and use it. You can think about things like accessibility issues, perhaps for those who are maybe tabbing through each cell and finding empty rows and columns, that sort of thing. But also those who uh, maybe want to use the um, spreadsheet for um, yeah, machine readability. And the second thing, um, which those of us who are producers of spreadsheets and um, publications on gov.uk and elsewhere, um, we probably want to improve things from our end as well. So in the, in the actual production of these spreadsheets, I'm not sure exactly how these spreadsheets were, were, were produced, um, but it seems to me like um, there might be some, some issues with workflow, um, the sort of strange values that kind of appeared in the corner and everything. Perhaps there's something going wrong there. Is there something we can do to help improve that. So the first place is uh, the first place I'm going to start with is um, user experience. This is kind of um, quote unquote solved problem, if you like. Um, there's a kind of a thousand reasons why people can't just improve um, spreadsheets and publications and things overnight, but um, there's lots of handy kind of guidance out there, which I'll just show you through now if you haven't seen them before. Um, the first port of call is um, the analysis function, which is kind of a centralized place um, for government statisticians, um, economists, etc., um, to come to for information. And this is an absolutely wonderful page, which I just recommend people read in general. This was produced by um, Hannah Thomas over at um, the analysis function. And this is specifically about releasing statistics in spreadsheets. And it doesn't necessarily mean releasing them out into the public. Is you can also take on board this advice for if you're producing anything internally, of course. Um, and the types of things we have in here um, are very helpful. So um, we get things like accessibility, usability, machine readability, we were just mentioning, uh, examples, some demos, um, communicating uncertainty, uh, and a nice checklist, those sorts of things. Um, so this is a really good place to start. This has loads of really uh, interesting and useful information. Uh, the checklist I just mentioned is um, a really good port of call just for you to, if you've produced a, a spreadsheet yourself, is to just go through one by one and sort of say, OK, well, have I have I met these um, these needs, these requirements? Um, and so that includes things like, yes, making sure there's no empty rows and columns, as we mentioned, um, things like marking up tables in an Excel spreadsheet, which makes them much easier um, for screen reader use, for example. Um, and I should say that all of this stuff is kind of backed up by by user research as well. Um, and uh, the analysis function team certainly have gone out and asked for um, input from from a wide variety of sources. So this is um, a very, very good resource for you, for you to look at. Um, I should say as well, there's something quite, quite interesting, a, a way of thinking about this that I hadn't before, which is that Hannah put together this, uh, which is called an empathy spreadsheet. And the idea here is to kind of mimic what it might be like to try and navigate one of these spreadsheets without actually being able to see the content of it. So you can kind of simulate um, people who have low vision, for example. And so the idea here is that you would be able to try and find out certain bits of information from within this workbook um, without kind of being able to see it. And so the example at the top here in, in the formula bar is saying um, that this is table one, percentage of all people, children, pensioners and working age adults who have a pet dinosaur. Um, so you can see it's kind of a, it's a bit fun, um, but that's quite good for kind of understanding some of the issues that you might experience for your own spreadsheets. 
wrap reproducible analytical pipelines was something that was mentioned as well. So the first of guidance is specifically about spreadsheet production, but this guidance is something which is rolling out much further across government and, and well beyond actually. Um, this is being picked up all over the place. Uh, the idea here is to be able to input um, some data, output some kind of um, document, publication, file, um, chart, whatever it might be, uh, using one workflow, code driven, uh, version controlled, uh, all these sorts of things. There is a wonderful uh, strategy, which is the page you're looking at now on the analysis function uh, website, um, which kind of builds towards how we can get this integrated with, um, with our work across government and beyond. Um, and that includes uh, all sorts of things um, like, yeah, getting the right culture, getting the right tools, getting buy in from managers and all these sorts of things. And the basic goal there obviously is to try and make our statistics kind of more trustworthy, if you like, um, try and um, from the perspective of producers be able to um, make the process faster, more reproducible um, and ultimately build more trust. And that leads me nicely into this page. This is from um, the uh, Code of Practice for Statistics website, which is um, part of the UK Statistics Authority. Uh, and the Code of Practice for Statistics is something we should adhere to when we're uh, creating um, documents for use by the general public. Um, and there are three pillars in this, which include trustworthiness, quality and value, which are things I just touched on, which are part of RAP. Um, and within that, there are um, very specific um, sub pillars, if you like, which relate to things like accessibility and usability. So where I'm going with all of this is that we have all this information, all this guidance that exists for how we can improve things on the kind of front end for, for users who are making use of those spreadsheets. What it sort of touches on but doesn't quite get into too deeply is whether we have some way of increasing the quality of the producer experience. And so just to be completely clear when I say that, I mean, this is the people who you might be one, uh, you're an analyst perhaps, and uh, you're producing maybe a quarterly publication or something. You're the person who's getting the data, doing something to it and producing an output. How can things be made easier on that side? so that the stuff we've just been talking about, user experience, can be improved. So I think that one way to do this would be through um, creating some kind of tool. Um, this is NHS R and I'm a big R user. Um, so I'm suggesting that that package uh, exists um, for, for R, um, something we can create, which is um, basically meets at least four kind of um, general principles, I think. Um, the first one is for it to be simple, like it should be, um, you know, uh, it, should have an, it should have an API, it should have functions which are simple to understand and use. Um, it should be kind of welcoming to people who um, maybe don't have very high technical knowledge. Um, it should also be uh, opinionated, and I don't mean that, you know, <laughs> it should just do whatever I say it should do, but more that it should be kind of restrictive, like decisions should be made so that you can make it, third point, compliant with uh, with the guidance um, that's out there from, from the answers function. Um, and then finally, I'm using the word known at the end. I think, I think the tool should be known, and what I mean by that is to make it um, open, um, go out and talk about it, um, like I am right now. Um, and um, <laughs> basically, the other reason for it to be called known is so that we have this wonderful uh, SOC acronym here, simple, opinionated, compliant, and known. Why? I, it was an accident, but uh, why not? Um, so to summarize, we should create a tool that makes things easier for us to create things, basically. As I say, I think this should be done in R because there's a lot of R users across government. RAP is something, as I mentioned, is code driven um, and R is quite central to that across government as, a, as an open source tool. Um, but wouldn't you know it, we got absolutely gazumped, of course, because there's, there's already a solution to this. Um, the analysis function team has a, a package in Python uh, called good practice tables. Uh, GP tables. Um, and I know this is NHS R, but um, you know, I, we're a wide church here, I think, and I believe there's also NHS Pi. Um, and so this is this is a first port of call, if you like. This is sort of an official um, Python package from the analysis function itself. Um, I should say this is available through R, through the reticulate package, which you may be familiar with. Um, so it's totally possible to use this in R. A little bit trickier, you will need um, kind of a little bit of understanding of Python. 
Um, but at the time where I was developing something myself, my own tool, this wasn't quite up to date with the current best practice um, guidance that the analysis function had reached. Um, and so I was producing something separately. I'm not really much of a Python user, much more an R user. So that naturally was how I was building uh, the tool we're about to learn about. Um, but to say that the um, you know, GP tables package is now fully up to date, uh, it's it, uh, yeah, it's backed by the analysis function itself. So you can just, if you like, again, here's another opportunity for you to just switch off uh, and go and, and Google for that um, and take that away. Um, but if you like native R solutions and you're a, an R user first and foremost, then um, I would encourage you to continue listening because um, what I was able to produce um, was this thing called uh, accessibility tables, uh, an R package, um, which does all the things um, which uh, are suggested in the, uh, the the best practice guidance. It produces spreadsheets which um, have an output which is much more usable, accessible, etc., according to best practice. Um, Yes, why a one one why this is kind of um, shorthand for accessibility um, if that wasn't um, obvious already. Um, but yes, yeah, slightly, slightly awkward name. Maybe it should have been something else. Uh, the idea here again is that this has a simple interface. Um, it's it takes data and information in and produces spreadsheets that are compliant on the other end. Um, and the other thing to, to kind of mention here is that um, this is, yeah, I guess like a work in a work in progress for sure. But basically, I was producing a bunch of code to meet best practice um, in various kind of ad hoc bits of script here and there. Um, and uh, it just dawned on me one day that that didn't make any sense and I should pull it all together. So that's what that's what this package is. Um, for sure, I would love to hear from people um, whether they use it or not um, with ideas of how it could be improved or if you want to kind of, um, you know, add some issues onto the GitHub repo, which was um, the link, to, link to it was at the start, will be at the end again, um, or have some code to add, then absolutely uh, do feel free. But this is the this is the website, the documentation website just here. So um, what we can do is we can take the uh, eggs example that we just had, and I'll show you how to walk through with the code to be able to produce a spreadsheet, which is maybe more more compliant, basically. And there won't be there won't really be any puns because, um, you know, <laughs> egg puns have been done to death. Um, but of course, the first place to start is with installation of this package. This exists entirely on GitHub for now. Um, it could go on CRAN um, so that people can just use the classic kind of install.packages and then type in accessibility tables. However, it's not there yet. It's still developing, so it's still, um, it still lives on GitHub. Uh, and one way to um, install this to your machine is to use the remotes package. So install that package and then uh, remotes. And then there's a function inside the remotes package called install GitHub. And we can grab the accessibility tables package from the CO, which is cabinet office, um, CO hyphen analysis um, team or organization. And once we've done that, we can use the classic uh, library uh, function to attach the package until the functions will be available to us. Nothing kind of strange so far. That's, I think, hopefully um, familiar to most. And then I mentioned the word simple. The basic workflow for using the package is, I was going to say three functions, but it's really two. The package has two, ma two main functions, and then there's a third one from, a, from another package. So the workflow here is that you create something called an accessibility table, create underscore accessibility table is the function name. You pass that to uh, a function called generate workbook. Uh, and then finally, you can save that workbook out. So what's happening here is that create accessibility table is creating a kind of data frame structure of all your data and information. Generate workbook is converting that to something called a workbook class format, which contains all the styling and everything that you need. And then finally, that's being saved by this OpenXLS function, save workbook um, as a file out onto your machine. So that's kind of that's kind of it, actually. It's sort of three steps. Um, so hopefully that's nice and simple. Um, for those who haven't seen it before, that is the um, sort of new uh, pipe, the base R pipe, the kind of um, the uh, vertical line and the greater than symbol there. Um, so this is just showing that you can take what's on the left hand side and pass it to the right hand side. You might have seen the Magritte pipe, the kind of percent uh, greater than percent symbol before, but this is uh, this is the base version of that, which is um, available from R4.1, is it? Something like that. 
of course, I was kind of mildly lying. It's not quite as simple as just typing those three things. Like clearly you need the data and the information in the first place. Um, so the create accessibility table function itself has um, one, two, three, four, five, six arguments. Uh, and each of these are the bits of information that you need to be able to um, create the content inside the tabs of your output spreadsheet. Um, so the first line there has three arguments, tab title, sheet types and sheet titles. These are required character vectors. You need to give each tab in your spreadsheet a name. Um, you have to give them uh, a title. That's the thing that goes in A1 that explains, you know, what is on that page. And then this thing called sheet types, which we can touch on in a second. But basically, um, that is a, a special um, character phrase that says whether that particular uh, sheet is the cover, the contents, the notes, or if it contains tables. Um, line three in, in, in this code here, uh, some optional character vectors where you can explain um, whether there are blank cells and what they mean in a table and uh, sources of that information if it's available. And then finally, the thing that's kind of most important is uh, this tables argument, and this is a required list of uh, data frames. So every page, every tab of your spreadsheet contains um, something in table format. Now, obviously, on pages that contain the data, you have a, a, a table of data. But actually, the way that accessibility tables works is that it treats the cover contents and notes uh, as also containing table format data, rectangular data. Um, and then, of course, yeah, generate workbook uh, in this case actually doesn't take any additional arguments. It just takes the output accessibility table. Uh, and then finally, that save workbook function, you just need a, a file path ultimately for where to save it. And I should say as well here, you don't even need to remember uh, this very little code that's here because you can also use uh, an RStudio add-in that comes with the package. Um, so you can click the add-in button at the top of RStudio if you're an RStudio user. Uh, and there's a number of templates you can add into your script, which will do this for you. So what I've done is I've taken the data that's inside that X spreadsheet. Um, I've pre-prepared it into a bunch of data objects, and each one of those data objects represents um, each one of those um, arguments, what needs to be passed to one of those arguments. So I've got blank cells, sheet titles, sheet types, etc. So the source function here is just going away and grabbing um, the objects that are output from an eggs.r file, which I happen to have saved into the, uh, the repository, the GitHub repository that contains this, this particular talk. Um, and the ls function there is just showing, it's just listing um, which objects are in the environment. And so we can see that we've got everything that we need. Um, what I'm saying as well is that we're not converting that old spreadsheet. We're not taking that spreadsheet, pressing a button, and out pops a lovely, shiny, new, clean thing. The idea here is that we have the, the data pre-prepared. Um, we have the vector of sheet titles. We have the list of names, uh, sorry, list of tables uh, ready to go. Uh, and so this is kind of a, a fresh workflow, if you like. Um, forget that previous spreadsheet. We're going from the kind of primal units um, of here's the tables, here's a vector of character um, um, names or titles or tab titles, whatever it may be. Cool. So just to prove to you that those things contain what I say they do, if we look at the first four things inside the egg sheet titles, we can see the sheet titles, UK egg packing station throughput and prices, that's for the cover page. Contents and notes pages will have the titles, contents and notes, perhaps no surprise. And then the first table in here is called table one throughput by country quarterly. So those are just some examples of some of the sheet titles. And then I mentioned, of course, that the tables um, object needs to be a list of data frames. And if we just take a look at the class of uh, that particular object, yes, we can see that is indeed a list. Um, inside create accessibility tables, then we can pass each one of these objects the appropriate argument. So our egg tab titles um, will be given as the tab titles argument and so on. Controversially, I'm using a right assign arrow. So if you didn't know that was possible, you're welcome. Uh, and we're going to call this object um, egg AT. Uh, and so this contains, this egg AT object contains our accessibility table, which contains all the data and information uh, that we want. That handily provides some kind of warnings and errors if there's any kinds of issues. Um, and that's kind of a big benefit of using uh, this package and these functions that it will tell you if there's problems. If there's, for example, uh, notes that you've declared that aren't in the notes sheet, it'll tell you about it. Um, if you are um, missing certain things, if you've got one too few tables for the number of um, suggested tab titles, for example, it tells you all of those things as well. So hopefully that's useful. 
And just to show you what um, class uh, this object is, um, it actually is arranging all of that information, um, those character vectors and um, the list of data frames into uh, a data frame structure or a tibble, which of course is the kind of tidyverse equivalent. Um, and it also has this class accessibility table, um, which in part um, just helps to um, kind of pick up on some of these warnings and errors and make sure that the output format is um, the format that we need it to be in. But for all intents and purposes, yeah, this is just a data frame, ultimately an accessibility table. Um, and we can see here, this is kind of a typical printout, um, tibble printout, um, showing you columns with the names tab title sheet type sheet title. So basically our arguments have become columns and then each of our rows is one of those sheets that will become um, part of our final output. So the first row is the cover, contents notes, table one, etc. Um, and you can see that I haven't provided any information about, about blank cells. There are none in this workbook, so we can use NA to show that there isn't any. Um, there's no source information, of course, for our cover contents and notes, so they get NAs, but there is source information for the other tables. And then finally, that table column in this view is just showing the letters DF, which is showing you that there is a data frame there. So this might be a bit foreign to some people. This might be a bit alien. This is a column that contains um, a list of data frames. So it's data frames kind of within a data frame, if you like. Um, but we can take a slice through this data frame just to show you a bit more of that. So if we use STR structure, um, we can look at table two. Uh, and this contains um, the tab title table two, the sheet type tables, sheet title table two throughput by system quarterly. Um, and then down the bottom here, you can see that in the table column for this particular row, we have indeed this kind of embedded uh, data frame. Uh, you can see that there are columns for year, quarter, um, system, eggs, and you can see the first few uh, kind of rows um, showing up on the right hand side there. So one row is one sheet. And I think data frames are something that most our users are used to, uh, tibbles are something that most users are used to. Um, so that's why uh, the package uses this kind of format. And again, I think that's part of the sort of simple requirement I was talking about earlier. This could be uh, a list. It could be something even more complicated, um, but the data frame seems um, handleable, usable, probably by a lot of producers uh, and our users in general. So that next step was to convert to a workbook, capital W workbook, because what we're doing is we're taking that kind of data frame structure and we're passing it over to the open XLSX package. And this is a great package for taking in some kind of data frame uh, and being able to apply to it um, all sorts of um, kind of style uh, changes. You can sort of set, you know, bold or how uh, wide a row is or how wide a column is. Uh, and you can add all sorts of extra uh, sort of XLS specific um, information um, to a sort of bog standard table um, with the idea that you can then save that out to a workbook um, to an XLSX file uh, and in doing so all that style information is carried with it uh, and uh, that's what you get in the final output. So yes the open XLS package is a huge driver at this step. Um, it's doing a lot of hard work um, and uh, what you get as an output is this uh, this class, which is called workbook. Um, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, I'm saying OpenXLSX does a lot of work here. I'm saying that the generate workbook function is very straightforward. It's just a, a single function that you pass your accessibility table to. But actually behind the scenes, there's a lot of work going on there. Um, and this is where that kind of opinionated requirement comes in a little bit. In the background, it's then looking at the information that's being given in that in that data frame in, the, in that accessibility table, and it's applying the styles which are recommended by the good practice guide. It's doing all that stuff for you, so so you don't have to basically. Um, will it be perfect? Not perfect, perhaps, but it's going to get you um, to a point where you have an output where you have the styling that's that's recommended, um, or you may need some some tweaks later. Um, but you can use the OpenXLS package uh, yourself as well on this eggwb object, which is where I'm saving the generate workbook um, function applied over the accessibility table. Um, you can edit that yourself here um, or later. But the point is that this is getting you pretty much all the way towards the kind of styling that you need. So here's what that um, workbook structure looks like. Um, when you print egg workbook, 
uh, you're getting some information here that's showing you, okay, well, this is a workbook object. Uh, sheet one is called cover. It's got some custom row height. It's got some custom column widths, etc. And this is basically a sort of list like thing that shows you what it looks like internally. Uh, just to prove that it has applied some, some styles and things like that. And so then finally, we can take that um, workbook um, class object, eggwb, uh, and we can use OpenXLSX's um, exposed function save workbook and just give it a, a path to write to, basically. Oh, great. So that's it, actually. So we've gone from create accessibility table to generate workbook to save workbook. We started with um, a bunch of tables, some vectors of kind of the names of um, the, the tabs and the, the sheet titles and those kinds of things. We then put that into a nice rectangle, into a nice data frame. Um, to that, we then applied um, a whole bunch of um, styling that gets us um, to a kind of point where we're going to see something which matches the, the best practice guidance. And then finally, in this step, um, we are just simply saving that uh, object out um, into our file system. Uh, as an XLSX in this case. So, yes. Uh, oh, I, I kind of mentioned no kind of puns. I guess this kind of is. We're going to crack it open now. We're going to look at that spreadsheet that's been produced. Um, you may remember what it looked like before with kind of various kind of styling issues, um, empty rows and columns, and that kind of thing. What you're about to see is um, something that will look potentially a little boring, actually, um, but that's sort of the point to some degree. We're trying to create something which is friendly for users um, who perhaps have accessibility needs. We're trying to improve it for um, machine readable situations as well. Um, and this is all me caveating to say, look, you're not going to be blown away by what you're about to see, but it meets best practice. So, oh, Clippy's back. Uh, and he's happy. Uh, so this is the cover page now. Um, so we didn't have one before. There was kind of like a, a tab at the end that kind of covered all the uh, information required. Um, but we now have um, a title at the top. We've got these sections, purpose, um, information about shorthand, methodology, etc. You notice there are no empty rows and columns here. You'll notice that we um, we have some changes to the width of cells so we can get some white space separating them without the need for empty rows. Um, and you can see we kind of have some sensibly named tabs now, cover contest notes, table one, etc. And then if we look in this contents page, um, we can see straight up we've got some um, screen reader friendly information. So straight up in A1, cell A1, the very first cell that people will see, they know it's going to be contents. We also have um, down from that um, a note that's an inserted automatically for you that says this worksheet shit work. Oh dear, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the wrong word. This worksheet uh, contains one table. Um, and then you can see again, no empty rows, no empty columns. Um, we've got markup on the uh, titles here, tab name and sheet title. Um, and then if we go into the notes page, you can see something very similar, but now we have some automatic widening of a cell here. You can see how this is a little wider. That's detected from the content automatically for you. Uh, and then down in this corner, right hand corner, we've got this little tiny kind of um, backwards L shape, if you like, which is showing you that this has been uh, this table has been marked up within Excel as a table. Um, and if you click in there, you can get information about the table. You can navigate through it much more easily. This is uh, a page of data. Again, the theming kind of follows as before. We can see something new in here, which is our source statement, source quarterly UK egg packing station survey. That's what we provided earlier. And automatically for you, what's happening is um, the functions have decided that there's a, a title row, there's a row containing the phrase, this worksheet contains one table, then the source, and then it's automatically knowing where to insert the table uh, into row four because it wants to avoid uh, those empty rows and columns. I decided to format this in, in, in long format, this data. Um, but again, you can see um, we've got these kind of bold titles um, and what have you. Um, incidentally, these kind of triangles in the corner is just uh, Excel complaining that it's contain, you know, it's looking for uh, a column that contains numbers, but there are um, notes in these columns to explain um, whether the, the data has been suppressed because of confidentiality and those are text. So that's why it's complaining a little bit here. And then if I just look at table two for a second, if I flip back and forth between them in that top left, you can see what I was saying before, that basically the table is being inserted um, in exactly the right place, given all of this kind of pre-table information, title and what have you. This one actually says, again, automatically put in there for you, this table contains notes, which can be found in the notes worksheet. 
basically the function has detected that you have written the word note one in square brackets inside the, the, the header there. Um, and it's automatically um, putting in that little note for you and arranging the um, information uh, above the table on your behalf. Um, and then finally, this is just another example of where um, a row has been, sorry, a column has been expanded slightly because the length of the header um, is basically, it's quite long. So there's kind of arbitrary cutoff at which um, it's decided that this should break. And so again, that's another kind of opinionated point that you can choose to change yourself later on. So that was um, the output, but I should mention this is not completely perfect. Um, you're not going to get 100% compliant output here, potentially. Um, you might need a few final tweaks. Um, of course, it assumes that the uh, spreadsheet is quite simple. I was able to take those kind of three rows of headers from before and turn them into a single header row. Maybe that's possible for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe you need two tables in a, in a workbook. Um, that's not currently possible here um, with this function, with this package um, as it is, but that might be something you want. Um, there are thousands of spreadsheets and there's sort of a million complicated things that you, you might personally need. Um, so the idea is that you can at least take uh, the output accessibility table or the output workbook uh, class object and, and do something to them yourselves just to amend them or tweak them and then of course classically garbage in garbage out you know if you put something <laughs> um kind of nonsensical in you may well get something nonsensical out so that may also happen there's some clunkiness as well i would say so there are limitations to the open xlsx package and what it can do some things are a bit tricky. People have asked for things like placeholder zeros um, in numbers that contain decimals. Not really doable with OpenXLSX in its current form. Um, you may want to fill in the file properties of your file, um, as in file properties, and then you put in, you know, the, the author of the spreadsheet and that kind of thing. Not possible programmatically uh, here. The output isn't an ODS file, which is quite a big one, actually. So there are methods that we're looking into for being able to pass the output, the XLSX file, um, into a system that will then output an ODS file. There are, there's very limited support in R for, for open uh, document formats, um, of which ODS is one. Um, so that's something that, that needs to be uh, fixed up because that's a non-proprietary format that we like to share things in. Um, and then finally, there's this kind of idea of there potentially being some fiddly prep that you might to do, you need to do to kind of get things into the correct shape. Um, maybe that's something which is more for the user to deal with than the package, but it could be a bit clunky uh, in theory. So for future, um, obviously things like bug fixes, any requests people might have and so on, we're currently in version 0.1. Um, and hopefully um, we're making our way to version 0.2 with some some fixes to these things and maybe some uh, some new features like, for example, what happens if you need someone who's not a coder to be able to input some text um, for the uh, for the spreadsheet, maybe on the cover page or something. Well, maybe we could create a text file um, which could be passed into the create accessibility table function instead of individual arguments um, for each of the um, elements of information and data. I've suggested YAML here, um, yet another markup language as the text format, but um, it's not it's not the best, so other ideas welcome. And then finally, there's this idea to, um, of course, try and converge with GP tables and kind of in theory um, and in practice, um, but also potentially just get completely um, <laughs> completely absorbed by GP tables, which is the official uh, source um, for uh, tooling on this. So um, hopefully, in some ways, maybe accessibility tables is a package that doesn't need to exist in future, um, but certainly for now, it's, it's solving a problem. So what? Well, I mean, obviously, I've shown you a package that does a thing. Um, maybe it'd be useful for you. If not, at least you've got the kind of guidance to go away with potentially from the analysis function. Do check that out. Um, but actually, this has all been a, a cunning ruse. Um, forget the spreadsheets. This is not what this is really about. What it's really about is um, getting you to think, I suppose. If you are a consumer of um, statistics um, and publications, um, you, you've probably bumped into some things that we've kind of discussed here. Um, so ultimately, as producers, um, if you are one, uh, you should be thinking about how you can kind of improve the user experience of the things you already have, even just sitting down and kind of looking against that checklist produced by the analysis function. Ultimately, though, if you are a producer, why not make things easier for you as part of that process? Um, these sorts of tools, um, these types of packages using wrap, um, make things easier for you and ultimately improve that user experience. And then the third one here is just cre about creating common tools. If you are doing the same thing over and over, someone else probably is doing it too. Maybe they have a solution already. If they don't, maybe you can work together to create that um, between you uh, and then share it around, which is kind of what I'm trying to do here with uh, with this particular R package. 
So um, I'll end again on that too long. Um, didn't read or watch or listen. If you are still here, thank you. Um, but if not, you can find out more information um, about this particular package from uh, the uh, the documentation website, co-analysis.github.io slash accessibility tables, A11Y tables. Um, the GitHub source uh, is also uh, linked to there. Um, and then if you wanted to um, find out more about what I'm up to with various R bits and, and reproducibility in a personal sense, uh, there's also the website link there. Uh, and then obviously the QR code, um, which also links to those things if you are pointing your camera at the screen um, on your phone right now. Um, otherwise, um, hopefully that's been um, mildly enlightening. Hopefully you've come away with at least one thing, whether it's one of the um, the uh, kind of best best practice guidance um, notes, um, whether it's the package itself, um, or whether it's sort of the knowledge that um, we should do our best to make things better for users and producers. Um, hopefully that's been useful. So I will stop there um, and uh, hopefully uh, begin to take some questions. Yes, yes that's wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, got a bit of feedback. Bit of feedback. Hope that's not really affecting anyone else. It's cleared. That's Teams for you. Um, yeah, we, there was a comment quite early on about the strategically anonymous comment for jokes, puns, bad dad jokes about eggs. You could have exploited it. You could have taken it further, but well done for holding back. It must have taken a lot of energy. Exploits. Oh, dear. Yeah. So there were a couple of other more technical ones under there as well, which were great. Um, I can publish that. Well, let me do a how do I do this? Can you see the questions or should I read them out? Um, I cannot see them. So if you could read them, that would be excellent. I will publish as well. I'll publish them too. So there's a couple of notif notifications in the questions and answers that people have seen about putting things in there. But is there a function to read a workbook produced by this package back into R? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought about it or that's almost, that's it. almost a planted question. So this oh, is nice. <laughs> this is something that has come up a couple of times. Um, and I think absolutely yes, uh, that should exist. It doesn't is the answer. Um, so part of what will be happening, hopefully for version 0.2 of the package is to do exactly that. Um, something that we kind of struggle with historically, um, of course, when downloading information from, from Government UK these, with these spreadsheets is yeah, getting the information out again. So if they're in some kind of common format that we can extract from, that's good. You could say, well, why isn't this a CSV? Uh, and it absolutely could be. It would be multiple, right? Like it might be 10 CSV files, which is fine. Some users don't want 10 CSV files. They want a spreadsheet. They want you know, additional information and so on. So that's why we're still producing um, spreadsheets. But yes, how do we then get it out? Um, can you still see my screen, actually? I can see you. So it's just you, but not your screen. That's fine. Basically, there is a package which is produced by a chap called Duncan Garmansway, who was a mm. former of mine actually um, and he's created a package called tidy excel and another called unpivotar uh, and basically their job is to be able to take the outputs from spreadsheets um, and pretty much rectangularize them i'm not sure if that's a word uh, so you effectively end up with a data frame which gives you the positioning of every bit of information in a workbook and then further things like whether they're colored or there's emboldening or whatever it might be so that's that's my kind of recommendation for now um, but uh, hopefully, as I say, for version 0.2 of this package, I would like to be able to undo, if you like, undo the spreadsheet back into constituent parts for sure. I've just randomly shared to the to, to the to the planted question there, the, um, <laughs> Duncan's blog. Uh, both Duncan and Matt, if people are part of the public sector, can they can be found in the government data science Slack group. And we can get in with NHS.net accounts, email addresses and GSX.gov, I think, as well. I'd recommend going there. There's lots, lots of conversations about reproducible analytical pipelines and R and Python. And you don't have to contribute necessarily. You can just lurk and still learn a lot. That's where I'd first met or seen some of the work that Duncan was doing and also through Matt, too. The second question, though, was can the accessibility table help avoid users of Excel coming across common problems such as lack of leading zeros and there's a link there which was mm. shared which is a Microsoft link about that very problem with text. Yeah so so th this is kind of perennial I guess um, and like I say open XLSX is an absolutely wonderful package for what it is um, and what it is, is something that can take, yes, a sort of flat table, apply some stylings and now put it into um, a spreadsheet. And so you can do things like have separate tabs and, 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 all, and so on. But actually, 
it's fairly limited in its ability to deal with some of these kind of thornier problems, actually. Um, and so I mentioned one for us as well, which is, yeah, this kind of decimalization thing, um, which it doesn't quite deal with. Um, but also, yes, where, for example, you have a text column, which actually is numbers, um, that is annoying. You can't just sort of blanket tell open XLX to tell <laughs> Excel to ignore that um, as far as I know so far. If someone knows, then that's great. So that's why I mean, like, actually, you might have to go in afterwards and just say, yes, yeah, sorry, Excel, this this actually is formatted as I intended. Sorry about that. Um, but that's actually another another feature of the package is that it looks in that cell and goes, aha, this thing is mostly numbers. Um, so therefore, I should format it by aligning it to the right as numbers. Um, and so that gets around the idea of if you have a kind of um, symbol for, you know, a suppression of a C perhaps in, in square brackets. Uh, instead of all those numbers then shifting across the other side of the cell, they are that cell that column is recognized as a numeric one. It goes across to the other side. But yeah, there's some annoying little tiny things like like those markers, which are not programmatically removable at this point. So that's why I mean we're not quite close. To, you know, we're close, but not 100% uh, there. And another question, does the package change any of the formats of the cells from the original data? How good practice guidelines have a role there as a question? So I think if, if I'm interpreting it correctly, basically the um, the guidance suggests that you don't do anything with, say, colour, for example, you shouldn't colour a cell. Um, that information should be encoded perhaps in a, in a new column, that kind of thing. So the package itself doesn't I mean, the functioning doesn't include anything that applies additional styles. Um, it doesn't do anything beyond what's recommended in the best practice guidelines, which is to have um, a particular font choice and um, font size, and then only use kind of emboldening in selected places like the title uh, and the column headers. So it doesn't go any further than that um, and doesn't apply anything extra that kind of breaks any of those uh, uh, rules, if you like. Um, but as I said, what you can do, if that's something you are interested in for some reason or another, like maybe it's an internal spreadsheet where color is useful and it's only being used by a small pool of people who expect to see it, you can go in yourself with OpenXLSX on that workbook class object that you create, and you can apply those styles yourself. Um, so you can kind of get to the point where you've got something that um, is created as an accessibility table, applies most of the, the functions um, and stylings and so on. And then you can edit it yourself um, and keep it programmatic by using the OpenXLSX package to do it if you need to. So I'm not sure if I've quite answered the question. I've answered what I think the question is. So I, hope no, you I think that's, that's a good point because the way I was interpreting it was a, a different way with Excel being the kind of culpable part here that data is a certain format, dates particularly, but then, quite honestly, Excel does that. It changes dates to its own serial date format without you kind of <laughs> holding on to that data. So, you know, when I bring it into R, I try to retain the original, but really sometimes I have to just go, OK, that was text, but it's not really supposed to be like that. So, yeah. So again, we're kind of in, in the lap of, um, of OpenXSX and, and the decisions that were made by those developers to be able to pass the information into Excel. And then once you're in Excel, well, <laughs> it's, a, it's a wild west, isn't it, basically? <laughs> And I just wanted to say as well, you mentioned versioning. Um, if people are interested, we also do an NHSR podcast, which has just released just a couple of days ago, where we, we got into a very geeky discussion. If people would like to join in with that about how to do versioning, uh, what was it? There's another one. There's We do it by semantics and with numbers, and then there's date formats as well, or, or fixing it to a date. I, I found it quite interesting when you said that you'll be coming up to two. Some of my internal packages are already in the double figures going on in the like naught point something. Um, that that do you have a few changes that you're kind of joining in that that last bit or yeah so I, I listened to that podcast Did you? oh that's excellent news <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, yeah this is this is um something which uh, yeah, is, is confusing yeah. how should you number why 0 0.1 and not 1.0 that kind of thing and it was described in the podcast so no spoilers but effectively <laughs> what we have with um, accessibility tables is that 0 0.1 point naught uh, was the point at which this thing became kind of relatively stable for use. I was using it myself. Um, it's been used by MOJ. Um, it's been used in Scottish government. It's been used in a few different places that a few people contact. Um, and so that was a kind of signifier. This thing is um, at a, a certain state. It's reached a certain milestone, if you like. 
Uh, and then with the introduction of new features that don't break the package, the idea here is that we'll go up to 0.23, etc. Um, and then eventually, if this thing ever gets released to CRAN, it may well bump up to a full blown version one um, at that point, but some others don't 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 use that system at all. And as you said, maybe it makes more sense for it to be dates. So you could have version 2023.01, for example, which actually gives you extra information about when the thing was created as well. So that's another great approach to it for sure. So there was a bit of a confirmation on the cell formats and it was a little bit close to what I was thinking, which was about the text and whether it's numbers or decimals. I was thinking dates because dates can just go, mm -hmm. it can be anything really. And then Excel has its own date format. So I think we did, a we, we gave more information or certainly you gave more information. So that's brilliant anyway, because colour mm -hmm. kind of gets overlooked so easily and it is a huge issue for people. I just wanted to say to people that there is a Menti link in the Q&A. For the people who are live today if you'd like to give some feedback to today um no further questions at the moment but i want to ask how long did it take you to build that package now bearing in mind that there'll be how long as in there'll have been years beforehand to build up to that and then how long to actually do it that's a really good question for two reasons one is exactly as you say like in theory I've been stewing over this for a long time and carrying bits of code with me as I've gone to various places. Um, I've been working with the people survey team um, and they produce some outputs um, which uh, needed to be spruced up a little bit. So in, in theory, starting back a few years ago when I started with them, but of course all of this, I mean, all the receipts are on GitHub as well. So you can see exactly when the thing was first kind of pushed to GitHub um, and then all the updates from there. In theory, um, not long in the sense that um yeah most information most of the code was already kind of pre-written um but actually a big part of this was um trying to get the sort of potential spaghetti in the background um put into a format that made the front end very simple so that generate workbook function i mentioned for example very simple interface you just you call it and put an accessibility table in it but actually thinking through in the background okay well this step needs to happen before that step we need to check for this first then that that's the thing that took the longest time and arguably it should be the thing that takes the longest time because it's kind of consideration of the user needs of the package what do you want it to do what should it do how can we kind of shortcut it and make it very quick and easy for you so that's that's definitely the bit that took the longest time the stuff about like make this bold you know that's just a line of open xls x code so you just have to you know find that and then apply it so yeah that was the, the trickiest part for sure that's wonderful thank you so much thank you so much for going through it as well and and a couple just dropping a couple of the egg puns in there um i do hope that you will join us for some other things for the nhsr community and other people as well here will really nice to hear that you are listening to the sound uh, soundcloud <laughs> podcast which i think a link has been shared as well and i just really want to say thank you so much for all of your work with this and what a great package it's really a great sort of use of R to make things accessible you're not just making it accessible for people who rely upon screen readers to read it for them and making it more available because uh, Hannah is it Hannah she'd said previously some people had never seen these spreadsheets or heard them as it were because they just were never accessible there was just too much white space to navigate it so opening up data to other people um and that's just wonderful so uh it's also great for us i was going to say as a sideline like a and that was a really exciting spreadsheet i know you said it wasn't but <laughs> that is great for a data like scientist that. analyst you're like yeah no white spaces perfectly you know where things are so we don't normally find it that exciting, you know, in terms of colours <laughs> that you can do in Excel, but for us, it was great. So thank you for your time. Thank you for everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day and see you soon, I hope. Thank you. OK, bye bye. Bye.